All right. Welcome to the Brains and Banter podcast. Uh, we are here with the amazing Felix Kongwe, and he is um, just such a wonderful person and so filled with compassion. And he is the Green Party candidate uh, for Surrey Centre, so in Surrey, British Columbia, Canada. Um, so we're right in the midst of the run for the federal election, and uh, we're all very excited. So, Felix, do you actually want to start just by talking about yourself and like who you are and how your value system led you to? Um, pursue this really exciting opportunity? Well, first of all, I'm a community organizer and a father and an arbitrator, a business consultant. And I've been working in this community for decades with most nonprofits, which are here, even just also with uh, different political leaders. My reason for stepping onto this is because actually for too long, like most people have seen that actually our votes have been taken for granted and there are people in power who just keep recycling themselves with the same ideology, nothing gets done and people are getting tired. So some people reached out to me some few months ago and said, Felix, why don't you do something? Because with your skills that you have and the work that you've been doing, I think you could better represent this writing. So that's why I decided to put myself out there I know it's a huge commitment and I think I'll be very much honored to save this community because I live here, my life is here, and I think I can do a better job, you know, in this writing. Uh, they're absolutely perfect for it. Um, just so um, eloquent and engaging and inspiring. I know, Nas, you feel the same way. Like every time we talk to you, we're like, all right, we're inspired. <laughs> change is happening. And so the, the slogan you have is imagine the change, right? So where, which I think is so perfect because we literally, that's what we do. We imagine things into reality. So what you're doing is, so all of the things you're advocating for, you've talked about it, you've imagined it. And then when you're elected, um, you're going to really um, bring them into fruition. So what would you say, um, like your key, if you had to pick two sort of um, key ideas, initiatives, or beliefs are to, to your mission right now? Well, my mission right now, the first of all, is to get people to understand that we can definitely do something different. It's not that we've had the same We've had the same people, we've tried the NDP, we've tried the liberals, we've tried the conservative in this area. I'm just asking all voters to ask themselves, what has actually changed? You know, sometimes people feel like change is not possible, but sometimes change can be for the better. And this is what I've seen as well as myself, working in different, different communities with First Nations, with youths, with children, with other different community leaders, that change is better. The economy and the system that we had in place showed us, you know, from last year and now, that we really have a problem. We have to rethink how we see the future. We have to rethink how we build our new economy. We have to rethink how we lead. And if I can be someone who would start changing that and making people to understand that we can do better, then that's the type of change agent that I want to be in Ottawa. I will work with whoever is elected, if elected, to get things done for this riding. Naz, do you have any questions for Felix? No, I, I'm just listening. I, <laughs> I, I like that. I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. You know, we've seen um, what has been happening for the last couple of years, and there's no actual change. You know, there's there's, there's talk of change. There has been talk of change for, for a very long time. And even, even if there is change, the change isn't necessarily impactful, right? And we need change that'll actually create change. We don't need like a figurative change. We need change in community and in a lot of the issues that are happening in the community. Absolutely. So I like that. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, like active change versus, uh, like you were saying, Felix. Uh, they're, they're, the people have changed, but nothing's actually happened. It's all it's all the same. So it's just, yeah, it's a, um, it's not real change at all. So I think that's what you're doing is uh, really um, bringing ac acting acting on um, your empathy and care, which is what compassion is like acting on your empathy. So I think that what you bring is 
a very compassionate um, perspective. And I, you know, that you're open to working with people with different ideas, right? Instead of just saying, oh, I don't believe in that, you would be open and willing if there were policies on a different side that you were working together on. I think what's really important is you're open to so many different perspectives. Would you say that's kind of part of the Green Party as a whole, this openness to new ideas and perspectives different than your own? Yes, exactly. That is part. That is one thing which actually drew me to the party. And this is something a lot of people don't know. The Green Party is the only party that does not win votes. As a Green Party representative of your riding, my job is to represent your interest and to ensure that anything that you this is what the other side if those other parties, they cannot commit their candidates can actually commit to say, you know what, this is something that is very special. And I just want people listening out there to know that this is what drew me onto this party. I know most of those people who are running you know, on, in, on in most of those other parties, they're very nice people. But what I'm saying is the structures that they have the Green Party has something which is very far much more reflective of what you need on the ground. And that's what Green representatives would do. They would deliver on whatever you need. And that is exceptionally different. That's a new kind of politics, Absolutely. which I think will be promoted. People need to know about this difference. That was like a kind of surprise to me because actually with the other parties, you have to follow the party line. Like yeah. you see all of them who are right now campaigning, they're just following what the liberal leader is saying and what the other uh, party is, leaders are saying from the conservative B, the NDP. They're all just like one following one party line. With the Green Party, my sole interest of being in Ottawa is to represent your interests. And this is the difference. If you like, go and ask most of them if they can pledge to do things which you need in your writing. I guess that's what they can do. That's why maybe I've been going to debates. Some of them don't show up because they don't want to make any mistake. Right. I'm just me. I'm coming in with compassion and that grassroots intelligence and level which you don't need in order to move this place forward. That's what I stand for, and that's why I'm doing this. Love it. I I really like that, actually, because I think a big issue in politics in general is, is a proper representation of the interests of the public, right? Um, I feel like in when we look at a lot of like you know modern day politics and what's happening, whether it's here on on like a local level or on a federal level or even on a global level, right? When we see um, people in power, they talk about, you know, standing up for the people and like, you know, worrying about their interests, but there's no people actually willing to sit down and have those conversations. And the fact that you're showing up to debates, you know, and working so hard is amazing and is what, what is needed is it's what, what is really needed in today's uh, society. Exactly. And, and, and for too long, we, that is something we've been looking for. I myself have been, knocking on doors for some of these people. I'm not a new face to some of them. And they know for too long, like many people, many people have turned up. Many people are not listening. I've been knocking on doors and I see really good people who are interested to, to involve in the process, but sometimes they feel like they're not being listened to. So if I can be given that opportunity to go there to Odawa, do um are the kind of places I want to represent. When when you do go and have conversations and knock on people's doors and um you know get to know what what exactly is the public's concern, what are some of the issues that you feel like are brought up most often? I know that definitely uh we have lots of, I think the first one that we would probably address is the housing crisis, um the environmental issues um um now with you know, like food insecurity and just how all of it's intersecting. But what are what are some of the most common things that you think are brought up? Yeah, I think like I can just remember like one one story, one man that I was talking to um, in the neighborhood, right? He told me 
you know what? I am right now I've been living here with my grandma for about close to 30 years and I've been laid off. And uh, what happened was after my grandma got Alzheimer's, there was no money for us to pay our rent. We are struggling. The house is going to, it's been sold. I don't know where I'm going to go after this. I'm standing here like this right now. I don't know what I'm going to do. So this housing issue even, but this is somebody who's been walking throughout his life. But one thing exceptional that he told me was, Felix, I am not sure if I can afford a one bedroom in most of these new high rises that they're building down there in Surrey Center. And I'm like, yes, this is something I've been hearing from other people. I have friends who have left and they don't want to come back anymore. We can't be living in a community where we don't have affordable rental units to people who are living here. Affordable housing complexes, which are non-profit. This has been something that has been there for a very, very long time. And right now, talking to this guy, talking to Michael, I felt so bad because there are so many families just like him who are moving away and nobody is... People are not actually listening. There is something big really happening in the community. People are moving away. And at the same time, we don't have even that support for those who are renting. So this is something which also attracted me to the Green Party. The support which they will provide to renters is very, very important. This is something that I think I will push for renters to have that support because evictions have been going up. People can't live in their homes now anymore. And just that uncertainty for this guy who's been working for so long to say, Felix, you know what? I don't know where more to go. My mom is no more at home. I am just here. The house has been sold. Right now, as I'm like this, I don't know what will happen in the next day. Imagine how that person is feeling being in that condition in this community, a place where he has ties build relationships you know this is one that will tell you if you go down there to places like around Surrey city center you know you can count how many affordable rental units are available there you can see them and they are so expensive so some people are doing two jobs they can't even pay them yeah yeah it's so scary and yeah it's and so relatable to so many people like even me, and it just made me think of how interconnected the pandemic and um, the climate crisis and uh, affordable housing and ending gender-based violence are all so connected, right? So um, people have lost their jobs because of COVID. And then if you get evicted from your house, you could end up on the street and then you have the wildfires and the intense heat from the climate crisis. And then women or men who need to escape escape their homes um, to find somewhere affordable can't do that. So they end up because of COVID inside homes with abusive um, people. And you just, you do such a good job of, of showing why (laughs) housing, affordable housing and addressing the climate crisis, why these are really, really key interconnected issues. Um, And is that sort of how you think you're approaching it is showing that, you know, by addressing this, we're also addressing these other, these other issues. Um, Would you say that's part of it? Yes, that's part yeah. of it, because according to the Greens, we believe that housing is a human right. Yeah. You know, the Greens have pledged to build over 300,000 affordable housing units and nonprofit complexes all over the country. And they want to build close to 50,000 supportive housing units. This is huge. This would be transformational if we start doing that. Just imagine what we could do with the spending right now, we are right now in an election which is costing us close to 600, 000, six, close to 600 and something million, right? What about, what about us using this money to support, to build those rental units? What about us using this money as well to support seniors or to kind of strengthen our healthcare system and to support some of these people who don't have jobs right now, wouldn't that now we have been outspent like small parties? Yeah. We are struggling. That's why I don't have signs in the streets. 
because we don't have that money. We were put in a very, very bad place. We have an uphill battle to climb. And those who are in power, what they do is they just throw out there, you know, empty promises. I'm just asking voters to think, you had them for the previous years. They had two years more left in their mandate. If you think that they really cared about affordable housing, why didn't they work with others to kind of accomplish that? We've not seen that happen. If they cared about affordable childcare, why didn't they work to accomplish that? Why do you expect that right now they're going to do that? These people are really, these are the very same people, the people who are right now in power. If you look back to history 30 years down the road, these were the people who slashed affordable housing budget. If you do your research, now they created that problem. They've ignored it for so long. And then they come to you, they throw an election, and then they say, you know what? People have need to have a voice. Why didn't you do something with the two years left in your mandate? So it's just absolutely a power grab. These are not people who are serious about leading. And that is one of the reasons why I am running, because I think that actually we need a new type of leadership in this riding. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I think you're just, yeah, absolutely made for it. You know, we need someone who can really um, engage and inspire people, but you're also like, you have, you have experience, right? You've pro- you have a lifetime of showing that you care about the community, that you're in, you care about community building, that you're connected to the people in your community within the riding and how important that is, right? You're really, really, really speaking on behalf of the people. And I think that really, really always, um, drew me to you when we first started talking. So, and I think you can, there's this real sense of change too. talking to um, Naz and we talked to Annamie Paul and she had that same sense that we're sort of at this um, turning point, right? And people are ready to change their minds. I think the pandemic and the climate crisis has thrown us into this um, collective sense of, um, I don't know, uh, anxiety and confusion and chaos. And we're now sort of ready to do something and change and get back, not get back to just like a normal life, but actually um, revolutionize and transform the way we're living before because it wasn't a good way of living prior to the pandemic. So you and Anime really represent uh, real, real change. And I think that's so exciting. Um, I'm also wondering if you can talk a bit more about, so you know how everyone is always like, oh, voting green is a wasted vote. So um, why isn't it? I mean, we I know why for sure, but I think um, it really helped viewers to hear it from you for sure. Well, that is a that is a central problem. I mean, just like you said is just like you said before. In the past, you've been voting the three major parties. Yeah. Nothing has changed, right? And some people think that voting green is a waste. Well, that's not true. You vote green, you are actually voting for your conscience. Any person who is telling you that you shouldn't vote green, that person wants to suppress your conscience and suppress your own values and what you believe in. And that person doesn't care. That person wants you to either stay at home, do strategic voting, vote for them. And so their party should have power and let them keep repeating the same thing over and over. And also another thing is, a vote for green is a vote for your actual confidence. It's voting for somebody who will represent your interest. I can't stress this more, you know, to people that people need to understand this. If you support Green Party candidates, the Green Party is the only party with a major pl- platform that addresses climate change, tra- climate transformation. And that will help us to transition onto much more uh, renewable, recyclable and a much more sustainable system. This is not something that I think the other parties do offer. We are right now in a place where I think we have an opportunity. One thing that the COVID has also showed us is our systems were not very solid as we think. So it's time for us to give change a chance because you know the exhibit is out there. You've been trying the other ones before. Nothing has actually changed. This whole issue with our pollution, with our emission, and all those things, 
they have been existing before. Even Canada is even lagging behind us compared to most G20 nations who signed the, the Paris Accord. We are behind on everything. If you look at other countries that have implemented something, uh, have implemented most of those policies. So we have to look at it as an opportunity right now to rebuild and even make things way much more better, much more sustainable, much more inclusive, where we bring in people who represent different, different factions, different, different ideas into our system and make it way much more accommodable and way much more, you know, dynamic. I can see. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, Jeremy Lent is, I think I've talked about him before, but he wrote a book called The Web of Meaning, and he defines harmony as um, sort of the um, combination of really disparate things to create something more rich and beautiful. And I think that's exactly what the Green Party like is open to doing, right? And I, I think that's so cool. And I was just listening to the CBC right before we talked and they had former chief of the Chippewas of the Thames First Nation on. And he was uh, saying that the party he plans to vote for is the Green Party because of its um, alignment with Mother Earth is how he phrased it, which was be beautiful. Um, so, and I think that, so if that is such a key focus, what are some major things you would do to address the climate crisis and would it involve indigenous leaders and who else would it involve? Who would you speak to in the community? Yes, I think the first thing that we need to do is we need to recognize the indigenous people. We need to empower them. We need to, first of all, recognize their hereditary and their right to self-determination. This is very, very important. And we have to also give them the rights to kind of object some of those projects like what you see right now happening in the, in the with the pipelines that they're just building through their villages and all those things that we can it's just unsustainable that's why i signed some of the pledges to ban those pipelines because i think we don't need more of the same we need to kind of have a national standard which is enabling us to definitely tax polluters in Canada. This is something that needs to be done right now. We need to cancel all the subsidies that oil companies get. This is just unacceptable. This is money that could be used to invest and in building, even bringing, bringing drinkable water to most of those First Nations villages, supporting our schools, supporting our first responders who are right now struggling with COVID, or even small business people who are right now having challenges. But yet we give it to the all giants, we give them subsidies, which some of them don't need. And in the end, we have communities which are struggling. So this is some of the things that I would definitely do, because I think that Canada can become a, a global leader in this struggle. But right now, we are not taking up that challenge, you know. And also, I think that we have to also support workers who have been working in the oil industry to transition. You know, because I think that it is very important. A lot of people are afraid that, oh, the Greens are going to come and then kill jobs. No, we will put in enough money there that will help most of those people to transition onto new green renewable jobs, which can help the economy to grow way much more better. Other countries like in Sweden and Europe, they're already doing that. Why can't we do that? I don't understand this. I think that also, you know, it will be good for us as Greens to ban fracking. That is something that I stand absolutely to do. That has to be done. There is no way for us to, 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 to do with, to do anything moving forward without that. We also need to increase the carbon tax. This is something that I feel that needs to be done. And we have to also invest in the transition of our power grid and all those things right now, which we use. We need to build more solar. We need to invest in solar. We need to help people who are excited about buying so the economy can be way much more balanced. And at the same time, also working on really allocating funding for most of you know research in this technology. Some of these things are already here. We just need to invest and put in that money there for small businesses, startups who are interested in developing that in those industries to pick it up and start doing it. And First Nations should be part of that plan. 
We need to release that funds that support most of them, their housing projects, their development projects. That will be things, those will be things that I'll be fighting for every day. In, ter- in terms of um, involving Indigenous communities, do you think when it comes down to making um, a lot of the policies and um, any, any, I guess, like the legal framework of uh, addressing things in the community revolving around the environment or the climate, do you think that there will be um, members and elders of the community that will be involved in the policy making? And or yes. is that something you would encourage? Yes, I would. I, I think I, I totally agree with Anime that they need to speak for themselves. So they need to be on the table, yeah. be part of that solution. We shouldn't be speaking on top of them like it has been happening in the previous administration. We should have them on the table. You have experience working with um, different communities too, right? Like I know um, that's part of your work. Was it through um, your work with small businesses or um, how did you get involved working with those communities? Well, I got, I, I've worked with several small businesses in, in the area as well. You know, I've been supporting them through the pandemic. And one other thing, since you talk about this, this small businesses is, you know, some of them, they came to me some previous years, uh, just like last year. You remember when the COVID hit, the federal government said they have money in place to support, especially small, you know, uh, BPOC uh, community businesses and small businesses. Yet, you know what? We were running around and people were filling out applications. I worked on grant applications, even loan applications. Almost like 50% of those businesses were not eligible to that. Imagine that looks like <laughs> it was kind of really very disappointing for most of those businesses because even black businesses who came to me and said, Felix, you know, help us apply for this. Other people groups are complaining that instead of providing us with a grant, you're providing us with a loan. You know, and these loans are mostly controlled by very, very big banks that have very, very rigid processes and systems in place on who applies, who gets it. So in the end, they create a system where you think there is 500 million, yet people can't get it even. You know, So that is one of my involvement with them. Also, I've been supporting nonprofits which are in the area in their grant writing and application processes. Also, as well as an arbitrator, I've been working with different groups and doing contracts. Also, um, I was also involved lately in the anti-racism strategy here in the, in the province to address racism. I was part of that advisory committee and working with a lot of different leaders across the board, regardless of where they come from, because I think systemic racism and racism is something that we need to address in the system. A lot of people know it, and some of our experiences are still too fresh. I, I think that it's not, we shouldn't be a society that we think about really supporting each other, but at the same time, we don't have systems in place, checks and balances that can hold people accountable who go out there, you know, troubling others who just want to go about their lives, right? I mean, so those are some of the things that I used to do. And in the past, I've been with industry have been also working with organizations that work with persons with disabilities with some of those homes and work with first nations groups as well i've worked with seniors i used to own a small business where i deliver home care to seniors so i understand some of these things so well and i think that i've been part of you know that, that group which has been here even when it comes to crime i used to serve on some of those advisory committees here in surrey uh, to deal with youth and gang-related issues. I've created programs for young people who are suffering with illicit drug and other things, and I've worked with most of the major groups that are in the area. So these are not things which are new to me because I live through them, and I am still running an organization and uh, which we are doing some of those programs for our youths and, uh, and, 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 and women and, and children. You do a lot, Felix. (laughs) 
I think that all of that you've done, all your work yeah. is, a, is a very heavy advantage on your side in the sense that you really understand, sir. You know, you you have been in the community and that is a vital, vital thing that I think um, someone in your position should have. And a lot of people don't have that. You know, they, they are, um, like you said, kind of following their mascots. And I think that you have, a heavy advantage in the fact that you do that, that you've done all of that and you understand the community from a insider perspective then from an empathetic perspective in the sense that you've heard the stories, you've seen things firsthand and that's what's needed. And and I love that very much. And that is something that I want people to understand. A lot of people who have been following it. Yeah, so um, th- those are some of the things that I would like people to understand. Do you want somebody who has been working with your families, with young people and all these different groups? Or do you want somebody who is just towing the party line, acting like the status quo, representing the status quo? It's all up to the voters right now to choose who they want to represent them. We are living in a very different time i keep saying this again and i cannot stress this anymore it requires a different form of leadership this is not business as usual the way it has been in the previous years you're going to need people who understand what people are facing from the ground what people are dealing with small business people families people who are homeless people who are struggling with rent people who are still struggling to develop their startup So these are all things that actually that I bring to the table. And as a community organizer, I've been working with most of the people who are here on the ground. And one thing I will do is I will work with whoever, no matter wherever the idea comes from, regardless of parties, to put the interest of the people of Surrey City Center in front. That's what I want to do in Ottawa if I'm giving that opportunity. So. Love it. And you, you've shown that to like, you've met my students as well. And I keep calling them my students. I am unemployed now, but uh, former students. Um, and uh, yeah, you're just so open to their ideas and to, um, I just like the, the, flexibility and openness to new ideas, I think is key. Um, I was also going to say about young people. So when we spoke with Anami Paul, she was saying that she thinks that young people and creatives are going to be like the absolute key to the real systemic change that you're also working towards. Um, so do you agree to, so obviously young people, but have you done, have you worked with some sort of creative people too in this process or encountered anyone that you feel like could really help with this as well? Um, you mean young people, right? Yeah, young people. And then Anami Paul had mentioned creative types. So people like Nas, uh, who's a spoken word poet um, and yeah, artists in the community. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I mean, and one place our office is in, is in Suri, Suri Center where you have um, where you have an organization that I used to be part of that advisory committee. We have young people start their own small businesses, you know, and we have worked on several different grants and opportunities for young people to start because the young people are the future, right? And I think they need to be part of that process. I've met so many of them who have started and they're doing really great stuff just by, you know, creating their small digital company. I am so proud of so many of them who went through uh, our programs at Baobab. Some of them right now work in places like Van City, Coast Capital. I know them when they see me, they wave Phoenix, right? I mean, awesome. when we used to run employment and training programs. And I am really so proud because, you know, there were groups in the community who saw really that um, that we were an organization. Even Quantlin, Steve, who is with, uh, with SFE right now, he was there. These are great people who came to our support at that very initial stage when we were building Baobab. And SFU has been there, Quantland, all of these universities, great community groups that we've been working with our businesses. And, and it's been just amazing to see. I can't even remember so many of their names, but <laughs> there's been, Baobab has seen a lot of young people. Some of them are right now working in really, through our programs. Yeah. They've been trained and they are working and they are working professionals in so many different places. And I'm so proud of them and I'm proud of the work that we've been doing. And uh, 
Mm. Yes, there are very talented young people around, you know, a lot of them, even like uh, Nas and others who are putting their, themselves mm-hmm. out there, yeah. you know, the, I am so proud of them because we, we can't just let the status go to control how we live, how we house ourselves, how we feed. It's it's high time we have to stand up. Yeah, absolutely. What are your thoughts then, speak of young people on um, higher education and tuition or um, I guess the abolishment of student debt. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, absolutely. You know, as a Green Party candidate, you know, I believe that uh, Canada should be tuition free. I mean, I know so many countries in Europe that have that. And, you know, I studied in Switzerland so many years ago. And I understand that people should, that shouldn't be a burden to students. Even I feel so worried about students here paying even for GST when they're buying books. It shouldn't be that way. Our students who are eligible to get loans and support, that is something that absolutely I will be supporting students. Any student who is eligible should be able to get that loan. Absolutely. That should be something that is that should be part of our responsibility as a system. We need to put in more money into research. We have to ensure that actually that students After they finish school, they should be given at least two years to pay back the debt. Because one thing that I have, even I was talking to another colleague the other day, who said, I am still paying my student loan up to now. The burden and the pressure that you put on some of those people with that, it's just so challenging. And as a society, we have to rethink how we do those things. Even lifelong learning is something that should be people who are eligible for they should be able to get that those dollars to train themselves because again 2022 20, 23 24 is going to be very different from the way we had uh, in 2019 or 2018 so we have to start training more young people bringing them into the workforce we need to pump in more money onto research to ensure that actually these people can do research create more new green jobs and support the economy. We can't keep doing the same thing. Like right now, they're saying, oh, the best, the best, like for example, the best strategy of the liberals is just that we're gonna fund, we're gonna do this, we're going to just continue. It's better if we continue in the same way, but we are continuing in that same way. What is our plan for the future? This is the question I keep asking myself when I meet them in debates, and I don't hear anything different from them. They just keep talking about what they're doing. There is no plan for the future. And we can't keep going down that road and expecting that things are going to change. It's now that we have to plan now. We have to bring in leaders who can come up with innovative ideas. And I think I am one of them. And others who are ready to work together, regardless of party. This whole partisanship has to stop because it's toxic. Absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's crazy. Yeah, the student debt, I've mentioned this in other podcasts, I think I owe the, uh, the government $40,000 still for my education. <laughs> and it, it is, it's it's crippling. And which is so sad, because I would still do it all over again, that, you know, it sort of reminds me of the idea of so why voting green is a wasted vote, you know, now people always say getting a degree in the humanities is like a wasted education, right? When in fact, it is the most, I think, like humanizing um, thing you can do, because you meet other people, you learn different ideas, you see that what you think may be different from someone else and learn to, I don't know, it's just so vital. And the Green Party is so absolutely necessary. I think that I'm glad that you kind of mentioned the whole uh, the, the the overlapping of um getting a degree and um <laughs> like that being a waste yeah yeah <laughs> and then like the green party it I think I think as people um the way that society's been moving since the industrial revolution <laughs> um we've we've stopped valuing our humanity and yes. I think that the green party and what they stand for and the way they're going about things. Like, obviously, at the end of the day, every pol- party is saying that, you know, we care about the people. We care in the long run about the people. But the Green Party, the way their approach is, is real, actual showing that, hey, we care. You know what I mean? The, the bringing in, I think, like you said, with the humanities degrees, it's the same thing where people will be like, mm, that's a waste of money. It's a waste of a degree. But in reality, the work that is put into all of that 
you know, society is forever changing. People are forever changing. And, and to study and understand that is difficult. Yeah. It's difficult. And the Green Party is the, the way that you're going about things, the way that you are involved in the community, you're aware and you're doing those difficult tasks. You're getting really like you're getting your hands dirty in the sense that you're really you're you're going to the site. You're not sitting behind and going, you know, I'm going to I'm going to do all these things. You're going to the site. And I think that's the most important part of it. Yeah. You know, so I, I like that you kind of mentioned the overlapping. Same. I'm a I'm a sociology major. And I, and I, I, I'm a young person, I'm 20, I'm going to be 21 in two weeks from now. And uh, I have a con- constant fear with my friends. I see what they're doing a couple of years older um, and they're broke. They're drowning in debt. They're starting their lives and they're starting it in debt. They are, another thing, we're not educated on any of this stuff in high school you know, it's basic the way that we should be funding ourselves and how we should work. None of that is brought up, you know, and um, and then you get to school and, and it's just like you don't know what you're doing. And then the housing crisis and then, you know, everything that's happening in the world, all of it overlaps. All of it's connected. And I think the way that the Green Party is going, the way that the, your your work is, is going to help. us. I'm not saying that it's going to change things overnight, but it's, it's a, the first, one of the first real steps, you know, and it all starts with that. You know, everyone talks about taking a step, but the real step is what really matters. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Love absolutely. It. absolutely. I agree with you. And, and that is something that people don't understand that we have to take that hard step. It's tough. It, it, you know, the truth is sometimes very hard for people to understand, right? When you're being honest with them, because all the empty promises are kind of look nice, but in reality, the green approach is way much more sustainable. You will get there at a much more, you are sure to get to your destination. We are sure to grow as a society. We are sure to grow as a community rather than being in a place where the same things just keep repeating themselves and the same people come and they, they, they take your vote and they, they go and they come back. So people really need to think, you know, during this election, do you want more of the same or do you want to make that hard choice? You know, that this is the place where I'm putting my vote because I want to invest in a party yeah. that would definitely represent my interests. This is like, a hard question of this election. And like you said, it's about the sustainability of it too. You know, um, every party has an end goal. Everyone has, you know, we're going to do this for you. We're going to do that for you. But it's, it's a matter of, okay, how many people are you shooting in the leg to get there? You know, and, and, it, and I think that the way that the Green Party's approach is, you're not shooting anyone in the leg. And that's how it should be. You know what I mean? And and that's like, that's the biggest reason I think that I like stand by you. And the biggest reason people need to acknowledge that, you know, Um, people are quick to like understand what the end goal is and what they want, whatever their interests may be, you know, whether it's even because like, you know, we do live in a capitalist society and there are people who prefer, you know, the the economy over the environment. (laughs) Um, But Overall, it's, it's about like, okay, to get there, what are you going to do? Who are you hurting? Who are you not hurting? Who are you acknowledging? You know, and, and, it, and I think that everyone gets so focused on the end goal that they forget about the journey there. And on the way on there, there's so many like elements. And I think the way that the Green Party is going about it and the way that the plan is set up and the way that you acknowledge things, nobody's getting shot in the leg. And that's how it should be. Now should be also running. <laughs> you, should, you should both be running together. It's me, right? <laughs> yeah. If I was old enough, I yeah. would. I don't even know. I don't know what the qualifications are, but man, do I want to get involved in politics? <laughs> yeah. Well, you're made for them, just like Felix, for sure. You're both just, yeah, mind-bogglingly 
inspiring and well-spoken and it's uh, a little bit intimidating you too. Um, but yeah, so Felix uh, Nas just said something brilliant. I was actually going to ask, um, I know we'll wrap up soon, but I was wondering if, um, cause is it, do you have three kids? Um, I, cause I was wondering if getting into the green party too, is about like guaranteeing that they have a future too, right? There's probably like a quite a personal aspect to it. Would you say? Yes, there is definitely a personal aspect to it. You know, lately, if you've been observing the issues with um, 270 wildfires, you know, seniors dying of the heat wave. And, you know, just the fact that we don't even have a plan in place to address, you know, the climate transformation and our environmental issues. You know, to me, that bothers me. Like, what kind of future are we going to, you know, what kind of future are we really building? You know, what are we leaving behind for our kids? Are we really being responsible? These things bothered me. That's why I said, you know what, I'm then looking at the Green Party. I was like, you know, this is definitely a party that has those values that I believe in and in doing something, not just for myself. It's not the selfish reason like you have with the others. It's about looking at the future. It's not just about me, 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 but the, being with the Green Party is about thinking about others. What we will leave behind for others who are behind us. This is why I joined the Green Party. So the kids could have a much more better world, which is cleaner, we're much more sustainable, we're much more, you know, uh, we're much more, you know, um, equal people are accepted. And in a, in, a, in, a, in a way that actually that we think everyone is going to feel like they're part of that transition. And right now, I don't feel that with the other parties. I, uh, like I said, I've worked with them before. There is no one that has really put a plank which is definitely addressing our future than the green. I don't know any other party that is doing that right now because they're all out there just to give you empty promises, which is just the same thing that we've been hearing for the previous years. You're doing that again, a really difficult step of actually starting the change and, and getting things going. I think that's so key. Um, so before we, um, I guess, say goodbye, but hopefully have a part two, we should do this as often as possible. What would you say? I think you've basically said it, but the, if you had to give like the key message of your platform, what do you think the key message would be? Well, the key message is that simple. Imagine the change that you want to create for the future. This is just what it is all about. You know, think about that. Look at your children in the eyes. If you're a young person, think about what you want, to, what which party you want to align yourself with. You know, if you are a small business owner, think about the type of business which you want to practice, the type of business opportunities that are ahead of us if green jobs are created if the Greens are elected, if Greens are supported. If you think about that, I think that you will make the right choice. So it's that simple. Just imagine yourself in a place where, in a society which is way much more inclusive, much more supportive, and where we are building sustainable jobs. I think workers would definitely just truly align themselves with the Green Party. Yeah, I think so too. It makes me think of, I think we've used this quotation somewhere about the imagination, but uh, there's this cognitive scientist, Jim Davies. I just love him. And he says, imagine how the world might be better in both big and small ways, then go make it happen. And that's what, what you're doing. So I just think that's so phenomenal. Um, yes, yeah, so we you. love you. <laughs> thank you. We love you too. Thank oh. you so much. Yeah. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah. Thank you for making time and, um, and I don't know when this is going to be released, but go out and vote. Yeah, vote. <laughs> vote, go yes. vote, everyone, please. If you are eligible to vote, vote. Yes, and, um, I think a, a, a big part of um, like voting, uh, especially for young people, and it's not just like the Green Party, young people don't value voting that much. Mm -hmm. And that needs to happen. You need to encourage them to get out there. 
and vote for the period party because <laughs> future we need it yeah future yeah. life <laughs> continue we want to continue to live and yeah no this was absolutely wonderful love you both and yeah let's talk very soon